Thomas HD is a master of the basics. When I sat and watched over his solo gameplay, one of the things that really stood out to me was just a really simple mechanic of the peanut butter edit. Everyone knows how to do it. Everyone knows the benefits of the right hand peek from it. But if you want to be a player of Thomas HD's caliber, this has to be second nature to you. It's not just quite as simple as a wall edit. The movement is what makes this important. Notice how Thomas HD does this and he swings all the way back into the corner to jump and take that shot. From the opponent's POV, there is no chance that he's going to be able to hit the shot before Thomas does. Awareness on the wall and the positioning they're at is absolutely key to this. If you play edit on release, this is actually something you definitely need to practice is be able to hit that peanut butter edit and then have the good movement to swing to the left hand side without messing up any of the other tiles. Then once you're in position, release and confirm that edit, then hit the shot, of course. If you just stand on the right hand side, even this dummy bot that's right there can hit me straight away. So positioning yourself is always 100% key. The important note is also being able to do this from every height, standing on a floor, standing on a cone, or if you're down on a ramp below as Thomas HD does right here. Notice you obviously don't have to swing as far to the left when you're doing this jump shot because that wall is slightly lower. Super simple movement mechanics, but this is something that people mess up every single game from high level pros down to everyday noobs. One of the most common defensive play styles that people use is to use a two by one box. And here's a very interesting way that I saw Thomas HD counter this play style. So notice upon approach, the first thing that Thomas does is block his right hand side as this will stop the player editing through that wall instead. Then just goes for a standard wall replace, peanut butter, cone slide, but fails to get the wall. However, his movement is still great that he moves to the left hand side as if he'd gotten the wall. And this allows him to get a big shot off on the opponent and only trades a 21 back to himself. Very often what the defensive players will do is they'll sit deep into one box, use the wall between them as a defensive layer, and then edit the wall that you're trying to fight them on. Because of that good movement, Thomas obviously avoided the shot and managed to trade back hugely in return. Now, because of this play style where the opponent had edited the wall inside the box and outside, this means that both of these walls are weak and Thomas can take advantage of that. If you notice, he actually failed to get the second wall, but this is where the opponent's mistake comes in. He didn't place a cone inside the box while trying to play defensive like this, allowing Thomas HD to get the ramp in and pick up the elimination as well. So three main takeaways. Firstly, if you're playing defensively, always put those cones inside of your box. Secondly, if you're aggressive, always minimize the amount of angles that the opponent can take on you by placing small walls like this. And thirdly, you can hugely take advantage of players who have just edited multiple walls by just spraying through it with the high firepower SMGs or MK7s and trying to replace them for yourself. When it comes to safety, one of the things that a lot of players will do is once they get into the later stages of the mid game, be a little reckless with their cover. Notice in this clip, it's the fifth zone. There's still plenty of players left remaining in the game. Thomas knows that if he starts to attack this wall, that'll mean that all the other players in the lobby will start to spray him. So the first thing that he does is create a tower, a defense to prevent that spray. If it's a really stacked lobby, you may want to do this as early as second and third zone, but this example is obviously just in the fifth. Now notice from this point of view, he doesn't pickaxe the wall, he instead sprays it to weaken it from a distance. He has absolutely zero information on where this player is, if they're looking, if he's ready to edit, and if he gets close to the pickaxe, that player could easily run out. Notice how he kind of leaves it down to 40 HP, then gets in a better position, and then wall replaces and hits the peanut butter edit, followed by a nice 106 shot. If he tried wall replace it from the angle he was at before, there was almost no way he could hit a good shot following that up, so just that small bit of caution really paid off. Finishing off the elimination, yeah, it's a little bit psycho, just running straight through, and he gets chunked for a ton of damage and actually almost dies to this player, but the setup was the main story. It was done well. Now, one of the things that really sets him apart in my mind, and let's be real, everyone's mind, everybody knows that Thomas HD has some of the best, if not the best aim in the game right now. Now, if you have this level of skill, this is a huge strength, obviously, but you must be able to utilize that in the right fashion. Yes, with the SMG and MK7, you just have to be able to put the crosshair on the head. Now, one of the mechanics that I think a lot of people underestimate how important it is, is just being able to take out your shotgun after doing some sort of mechanical build. Even if it's just a wall replace and a cone place, you still have to press that one more button to take the shotgun back out. So notice in this clip, he's pickaxing the wall to start with, and I want you to pay close attention to the actual pickaxe. Notice how now he's got the build menu out, the instant edit comes out and the pickaxe doesn't come out even momentarily. It's instantly the shotgun that is pulled out instead. This is as basic as mechanics get, but you have to have this nailed. If you're going into creative to practice any form of mechanical drill, if it's a triple edit, if it's a wall replace, even if it's just a cone slide, regardless of what it is, you have to be able to instantly pull out your shotgun after that. Because every millisecond slower you are at pulling out that shotgun, that's more time for your opponent to hit you first. 
So whatever you're practicing, make sure you're also pulling out that shotgun afterwards. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot. Please subscribe if you aren't already. Peace.